to everyone out there with eyes and earballs. We are Alpha Rookie, and today we have a video about Predator comics. I'm just gonna let that image sink in for a second. All right, everybody get it? All right, if you didn't get it, we'll explain it at the end. We already did a top three aliens video, which you can go watch here. Seriously, it's really good, go watch it. Even if you already watched it, watch it again. So to satisfy the huge demand for Predator content, from all four of you, and maybe this one, but we're not totally sure that counts. Here we is with a top Predator comics list thing, except it's not a, really a list. We compiled a set of Predator comics we feel are worth checking out. And the rest? Eh. You can read them if you want. I mean, I did. I don't know. Remember, follow on Instagram, and maybe Twitter too, if that's still a thing. And subscribe or comment. You know, that social media stuff. On to the video. I get it, dude. You're excited. Actually, never mind. First, some backstory. Come on, man. God damn it. The first Predator comic was published in 1989 by Dark Horse two years after the first film. Dark Horse acquired the license from Fox the year after they successfully began publishing Aliens comics and continued to publish Predator comics for about 10 years afterwards before dropping off completely for a while. Much like the initial Alien series, the first Predator story was sort of a sequel to the original film, this time following Dutch's brother. You know, Dutch. Arnold fucking Schwarzenegger kills the Predator at the end. All right, there's a lot to cover there, and we're going to go over those in a separate video since it's a big old thing unto itself. With the exception of the story starring Dutch's brother, Concrete Jungle, Cold War, Dark River, pretty much every other Predator story was self-contained. It seems like the Predator comics as a whole are not as generally praised as the Aliens comics, and that's with good reason. But to be fair, Predator is a trickier property to deal with. For one, the Aliens movies are science fiction films that take place in the future, and Predator is traditionally relegated to the present. Aliens as a property invites fresh ideas, new concepts, and technology, since it itself is a world-building experiment to begin with. With the exception of the creature itself, Predator is essentially just trading in modern action movies. And hey, don't get me wrong, I love me some modern, macho, shooty McBullet face, capital A action films. That was insanely masculine. But it's a genre that's more exciting for cinema than it is for comics. The Predator movies have a formula. The first half is a slasher movie, except it's a bunch of badasses instead of a bunch of teenagers. And they're all getting murked by a bigger alien badass. These side badasses, who aren't badass enough, get picked off one by one until the main character badass, who it turns out just might have a high enough badass level to match the monster's badass level, takes the fight, back to the monster badass, and they trade blows until the end to find out who is number one badass. It's a formula that works if done correctly, but comics speak a different language and it can be easy to fall into a trap of retreading imagery and concepts in a redundant way. The better Predator comics avoid this by leaving the formula intact, but completely changing the setting so it feels fresh, or rejecting the tone and formula of the films completely. Okay, enough Predator 101. Let's take a look at some of the better standalone Predator comics in no certain order of importance. All right, first up, Nemesis by Gordon Rennie and Colin McNeil. So, Nemesis is one of those stories that avoids the formula redundancy by changing the time period. In this case, the action takes place in Victorian London. The protagonist is an ex-military captain named Soames, who has been commissioned by British intelligence to investigate a recent series of ghastly murders in the Whitechapel district. Of course, the murders are being committed by our good extraterrestrial friend, who the London papers have taken to calling spring -Hill Jack. Captain Soames has encountered the alien creature once before while he was stationed in India, and is determined to face it down this time. The formulaic elements are done very well, and the action at the climax is presented clearly and cleverly but it's the elements of the story that take advantage of its setting that make it unique. Soames' history with England's imperialism at its all-time high. The clandestine nature of the British intelligence, headed by none other than Mycraft Holmes for the Sherlock fans. The alien craft lit by gas lamp in an ancient underground sewer. And the focus of action on the Thames River all make Nemesis a uniquely British predator story in the best way possible. Homeworld by James Vance, Kate Vorley, and Toby Cypress. Homeworld is a successful Predator story because it has no interest in the Predator formula at all. In fact, it goes out of its way to portray the Predator alien species not as a mass-murdering, bloodthirsty monster, but rather takes a more nuanced approach to presenting the titular species as something more complicated. 
Homeworld story is told from the perspective of two people held in captivity by an ambiguous government force. Think like the smoking man from X-Files. This is after surviving an encounter with a group of violent young predators and another older predator that seems hell-bent on stopping them. The two survivors are held in separate rooms and asked to tell their respective sides of the story. What makes Homeworld cool is the layered storytelling. We have each protagonist's take on the events, the government agent's take on the protagonist's take, and then we as the reader develop our own take on everyone else's take on each other's takes on the event. It all allows for some pretty interesting conjecture on predator behavior, culture, and their origin as well. Hell Come A-Walkin' by Nancy Collins and Deem Ornstrom. Much like Nemesis, Hell Come A-Walkin' chooses to give us a wildly different setting. The Civil War in this case. Unlike Nemesis, this story focuses on not just one character, but several, as it is about Union and Confederate soldiers putting their conflicts aside to defeat a more dangerous enemy. We've seen that kind of story before, and it works well within the Predator formula. What really works about the story is that if you take all the Predator stuff away, it works as an interesting war story. It develops its characters believably and with wide enough variance that it doesn't need an alien monster to spice things up. But when old Pussyface does show up, you're pretty invested in how he will be brought down and who will be left standing. Yeah, that's right, I said Pussyface. <laughs> you can't put that one on me, that's Danny Glover. Okay, Pussyface. <laughs> if these stories sound cool, actually they can all be found in Predator Omnibus Volume 4. Those are just some of the longer stories that I enjoy, but there are quite a few short stories that are worth mentioning too, like Strange Rue, Row, whatever. It's a kind of action comedy with clear and exciting choreography, as well as a good punchline. And Captive, one of the rare, more science fiction-y stories about a biodome facility used to house the only predator taken alive. All right, like I said, uh, you can check out the other comics. Uh, you know, they're, they're not horrible. It's just these are the ones that I really liked. And uh, as I mentioned before at the beginning of the video, we are going to be doing a completely separate video to go over the, the initial Predator series, the ones that star Dutch's brother. Just, yeah, overall, the Predator comics, they're good, but I just don't think they're as good or has much impact as the Aliens comics, but there is some stuff worth checking out. However, the Aliens vs. Predator series, or at least the initial series, is really fantastic. Um, we'll definitely get to a video with that. We're kind of figuring out how we want to go about doing that, uh, doing all the different versus uh, crossover mashup comics. Uh, so look forward to that in the future as well. So like us, tell your friends about us. Please put comments in the comment section. That's a good place to make recommendations for future videos. We'll take a look at your recommendations and decide if they're dumb or not. As promised, here's the explanation for the joke at the beginning of the video. <laughs> Except it's a bunch of badasses instead of a bunch of teenagers. And they're all getting murked by a bigger alien badass. These side badasses, who aren't badass enough, get picked off one by one until the main character <laughs> badass, who it turns out just might have a high enough badass level to match the monster's badass level, takes the fight back to the monster, and they trade blows until the end to find out who is the ultimate badass. Except it's a bunch of badasses instead of a bunch of teenagers. And they're all getting murked by a bigger alien badass. These side badasses, who aren't badass enough, get picked off one by one until the main character... <laughs> God damn it, God, I'm so fucking... Just cut through it! And it fucking... <laughs> it's <just> so close! <laughs> 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 And they're all getting murked by a bigger alien badass. These side badasses who aren't badass. <laughs>